I'm so excited to be part of Loop 38, which is this um, new music ensemble that just started this year in Houston by a couple friends of mine, um, musicians and people that I adore and respect so much, Yvonne Chen and Jerry Ho. And um, tomorrow I'll be playing my second concert with them and I'm so excited. It's um, George Friedrich Haas's In Vain. Um, it's for 24 musicians and um, it's a long piece, like an hour, and we're doing it in Rothko Chapel, which is the most incredible space for this piece. Um, I've, I've always gone to Rothko Chapel for really special events, uh, like an interfaith concert I played at earlier this year, and it's just such a beautiful space. Um, when you go in there, there's every possible sacred text available, um, and it's, it's just such a great place, you know, the idea of, like, a place that has so much void that you have to meet yourself. Um, and working on this piece has been so rewarding. It's one of the most like spiritual um, experiences I've ever had. And um, it really reminded me of one of my favorite books um, or plays I've ever read, which is Waiting for Gatto by Samuel Beckett. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the similarities that I find between them. And geek out about the piece a little bit um, before our concert tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Rothko Chapel. Hope you'll come. Um, so I have this great copy of Waiting for Gatto, which has the most insane quote on the front of it, which is, a threnody of hope, deceived and deferred, but never extinguished, a place suffused with tenderness for the whole human perplexity, with phrases that come like a sharp stab of beauty and pain. Um, I mean... That's a lot to live up to um, as a review on the front of the book, but I remember finishing it and sobbing in my bed, and I remember feeling so close to every human. Um, I was just weeping for, you know, the human perplexity, and that's kind of what um, the Haas feels like, too. Um, so the Haas works a lot with um, opposition, and it's, um, you know, there's a kind of like a light show that goes with it that is just stunning in Rothko Chapel. Um, and so there's a lot about darkness and light, um, just, um, the idea of, um, like the, his use of, um, tonality also, it's, um, he does like modern tuning sometimes, but then he has, um, pure intervals and there's a lot of tuning stuff we've had to work on. Um, and that's kind of like the sharp stab of beauty and pain and, um, there is, I mean, his style, there is something romantic, there's something incredibly beautiful about it. It's, um, it's not, you know, I would describe it the way that I've heard Virginia Woolf described, which is just austere sensuality, um, which is also kind of what I feel about Rothko Chapel. I think I'm rambling a lot, but anyway, um, the light show is incredible. There are, like, um, times when we go into total darkness and we have to have these parts memorized and um, the feeling in there, especially in Rothko where the paintings supposedly pulse, um, it's um, it's so primitive, it's such a raw feeling and I actually, I get distressed and I, I have these really strong primitive emotions that I feel like are, are primal, are innate and I'm really interested to see if audience members will feel that way or you know, if um, something about it, you know, this kind of thing, like lights and music, it can be a little gimmicky or just like conceptually cool and not work out. But this feels like it's um, really something special, um, especially in the space. Um, and um, all of the tuning stuff that happens, the dissonance is, um, it's so incredible. I, the sounds that we're getting, the eeriness um, in this place, it's it's really amazing. One of my favorite parts is um, the first dark section, and it's just all these different instruments have 10 seconds where they they do um, a swell by themselves, and then um, you have to have it memorized, so you're based on, um, you're coming in based on cues, and so I'm holding this A for the longest time, and then I hear my, my like, wind twin, which is oboe, play the same note, and then I immediately re uh, respond by moving away. And something about that is so moving that we all have like this pair in the world, but as soon as we like meet in that instance, we just like depart. Um, it, it's an in, 
incredible section and even the beginning it's just total chaos um we have all these tens and elevens in scales um arpeggios all you know creaky bat noise things and the effect is just incredible um chaos it really sounds like you know the opening of pandora's box or something and um for me there there are so many swells and different um kind of you know, uh, surprises that all the instruments are doing at different times. And um, especially with the, the whole darkness and light thing, it really feels like a um, an exploration of repressed urges and what happens and um, the kind of like gestation of our darkest selves or our desires and the need to go through all of that darkness in order to find, you know, kind of like the... the um, suffused tenderness of being human and the confusion and um uh, it's um also for me um because we're playing these repeated scales and things like that it it's such a commentary on pattern and habit and these i mean i know it's like a pun on our group name but these loops that we get into and how um how they coagulate into chaos and how stuck everything is how everything is in vain how we'll wait for god Gatto for forever for no reason and um it's just um it's just so sad I find myself getting really really moved um but at the same time it's the same thing with waiting for Gatto the Beckett um like maybe there are things that are in vain but you know even on stage you're with 24 other musicians going through this together and Dee Dee and Gogo in the book are together and um I don't know, there's something about both of them that make me feel so much closer to humans, other humans. Um, there's also my, like, favorite part are these really slow scales that we do, and it just sounds like the whole earth, like, we're sagging, we're under this unbearable weight, um, or, like, I imagine, like, a clown face with the makeup just dripping off at the end of the day. I know, I'm going, like, um totally like imagination world with all of this but it's just such a um crazy piece and in some ways I feel like um it, it's like a rebirth sometimes coming out of rehearsal but it's like a a true birth or it's like I feel like I've been through something really narrow and really um precise and um it, it's I don't know it has the capacity to change I think um so Anyway, I just kind of, you know, talked for a long time, and I'm not even sure about what. Um, but I um, just love both of these things. Um, I'm going to say um, there was one picture that I took of a quote um, from Waiting for Gatto, um, and it's, um, Have you not done tormenting me with your accursed time? One day, is that not enough for you? One day he went dumb, one day I went blind, one day we'll go deaf, one day we were born, one day we shall die, the same day, the same second. Is that not enough for you? They give birth a stride of a grave, the light gleams an instant, then it's night once more. And for me that is really um, so much what this piece and um, this play are about. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching me ramble. Um, come to our concert tomorrow if you can. Um, it's gonna be so cool. It's cool to be, I mean, this piece is cool, this place is cool, everything together is great. Um, I love all the people who are playing, and it's gonna be a good time. Okay.